Welcome back to another uh, Cold Blast episode. Cold Blast. Cold Blast with Lou Coomer. Today we are talking about diagnosing a five flash code on an indoor unit. Is it the inverter or the compressor? I don't know, Lou. You tell us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So, <clears throat> last episode we talked about the three board setup and we talked about the power board and its responsibilities and we kind of didn't dive into what else it does the other thing it does is it actually controls the speed our compressor is going to run at uh, so if we have a problem with our compressor or or the inverter board i, I get a, the common call is is it the compressor or is it the pc and is it the inverter the inverter board which is your power board power inverter board let's just call it that and uh, so typically a customer is going to call the, uh, one of our diamond contractors and say their indoor unit is flashing five times and they have no cooling or heating. So, so the, the unit will not be functioning if, this, if they've got this problem. It Regardless may, of its compressor or board, they won't have a functioning indoor unit. They, it may be blowing air or turning on and off every three minutes. Okay. Uh, but it's going to be thrown But not a lot flashes. of heat or cool. There will be no heat or cool gotcha. coming out of gotcha. it. It will just be neutral temperature. And air. they'll see these five flashes. And they'll see these five Perfect. flashes. So what we're going to do is the technician is going to have to open the outdoor unit up and then to confirm that uh, on a small unit, it's going to be a two flash code on the outdoor unit. On a larger unit, it's going to be a red light solid two flash on the yellow so it's really a two flash code and that's a what's called an overcurrent so there's two reasons for this and this is why we got to decide if we have a compressor problem or if we have the uh, inverter power board problem so a little backstory on what what happens here so that power board and this is a, a, a confusion a lot of techs have it takes uh, single phase AC voltage converts it to DC and then it also converts it to modulating three phase AC voltage hmm. now a lot of guys think because we turn that voltage into DC that it stays DC in its three phase and it's not it's AC voltage so guys gonna want to set his meter for AC when he's gonna do this test and that's a common common mistake those common guys mistake. are leaving it yeah the guys are like thinking it's uh, it's DC voltage gotcha. and it's not so it's AC voltage, three phase, and what's gonna happen is with that, the responsibility of that is a three phase motor has three equal uh, sets of windings on it. So we have to send equal voltage to those windings. Makes sense. Now, since we have an inverter style unit, remember we, it's a, it can ramp up or ramp mm -hmm. down, the voltage is not important. So it could be 50 volts, it could be 80 volts, it could be 120 volts. You'll never see it be 240 volts because okay. the common thing is, oh, it's a 240-volt uh, supply to the unit, so that's what our voltage It should, should always be. be doing that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like in a standard unit, that's what it would be, right. a standard, like, uh, centralized standard air conditioner. Sure. But no, this voltage will never actually be 240. It'll always be something different. What's important is that voltage stays the same on all three of the supplies to the compressor. So we have three wires going to the compressor. It's called UV and W. UV and W should all be the same. And uh, so an example of it not being the same would be I, I'd have 100 volts on, on one of the wires, like let's say U, and let's say V is 100 volts, and then W is 20 volts. Mm -hmm. That's bad. It's going to make your compressor very unhappy because it doesn't have equal voltage going to it. So how do we determine... Because what we're going to see when we walk on this job is the compressor is going to try to start for a couple seconds, then it's going to shut down. Gotcha. So, Lou, how do I check this voltage? Where do we get, start? I don't get enough time. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we have to power down the outdoor unit, and then we're going to take, wait a few minutes for everything to bleed off any DC voltages, at least five minutes. And then we're going to take the compressor wires off the compressor. Make sure you know where you took them off from so you know where to put them back and then you're going to leave them exposed not touching but completely anything. disconnected completely disconnected not touching anything obviously you don't want them to short out when you power this thing mm -hmm. back up so what you're going to do is now we want to buy ourselves some time to see if it's the voltage or if it's the right. compressor so now that we're not connected the with the the indoor the outdoor unit board has is an overcurrent protection in it so it's not going to let it destroy itself okay so 
it's going to shut this off within a couple seconds, which is no time to be able to test voltage. So now we're going to disconnect that so that can't happen. So then we're going to go to the indoor unit. We're going to power the outdoor unit back up, make sure the wires are clear of anything, any any uh, metal or you know shorting mm -hmm. against anything. And we're going to go to the indoor unit and we're going to push, and it's usually on the right-hand side on a wall unit, it's the emergency button. Now the emergency button is going to usually be over by the green LED lights or right underneath the cover mm -hmm. where you yep, the right where it flips down. Right. So you're going to push that, say we're doing a cooling check, you're going to push that one time. And what that's going to do is it's going to send a, the first half hour is going to be test mode. And then if you were continued to let that stay in that mode, it would maintain 75 degrees, uh, which is convenient if a customer lost a remote control and there's no other way to control the unit till you can get a new remote control for them. That's, a, that's the other function. They can just hold a room at 75 right. doing that. Yeah, method. that's the other common function of the emergency button. But in this case, we're using it as a test. So what it's going to do is it's going to send a fixed frequency to the compressor so it's not going to keep varying on you like under traditional operation okay so after you push that in you're going to go back outside to the outdoor unit and as soon as the condenser fan comes on within a minute you should the voltage will appear on those three wires and that's the point you're going to want to check them and like i said it doesn't matter what the voltage is less obviously it's zero uh, as long as all three legs are the same so you're going to have your, your test is going to be red to black, let's say it's 87 volts. Red to white, let's say it's 87 volts. Black to white, 87 volts. There is examples, it's not always going to be that voltage. That would be a good power inverter board. And then you would have to be looking at possibly a bad compressor. Mm -hmm. uh, if we read red to black, 87, red to white, 54, and black to white, 21 volts, that that's a bad, a bad that's a bad inverter board so then we have to replace the power uh inverter board and then once we replace that the compressor should run fine so those are the two that's the, the test to confirm one or the other that's the so you do it it's the only way to get this test done because if the compressor is connected uh regardless if it's good or bad it's going to keep trying to it's going to it's going to try to start it's going to overcurrent it's going to shut off instantly so this is the way to get around that so we could actually test these these voltages awesome that's yeah. great stuff lou and that's pretty much it on that sweet thank All you right. thank you no much. Problem. <laughs>